Kemi Badenoch's casual dismissal of Rachel Reeves' achievement as the first female chancellor, branding it merely a shattering of a very low glass ceiling, strikes a discordant note in a landscape already scarred by public betrayal and hardship. This view risks trivialising not only Reeves's position, but also the broader strides that women have taken to attain roles of influence. And it's a curious strategy, particularly from someone who champions the narrative of hard-fought hard fought battles for recognition. The comparison between Badenoch's understated glass ceiling rhetoric and the public outrage around Partygate is striking. While the nation abided by stringent rules, some in government reportedly treated lockdown protocols as optional. The vivid image of government staff sprawling on wine-stained sofas, evocative of a Matt Hancock diary entry with an ooh, madam uh, twist, becomes a metaphor for a cavalier disregard for the conventions and sacrifices expected of the real public. Because it's not just the machinery of law that was wrong, but it was this contempt for ordinary people that there should be one behaviour in Downing Street and another in the rest of the United Kingdom. Badenoch does the same thing when she talks about the budget. She says that it's routine for opposition to oppose the budget, but it goes beyond that, doesn't it? And it's more than just saying we oppose VAT on private schools because that's against aspiration. Actually, it's about principle, that we don't tax education just as we don't tax health care, no matter how it's sourced. And in that way, she was evasive with Laura Quensberg about whether she would reverse the national insurance hike. I don't understand. Asked about the Boris scandal, she said the Chris Pincher scandal was too far. But Partygate? I thought it was overblown. We should not have created fixed penalty notices, for example. That was us not going with our principles. The principle wasn't about the 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 creation of the fixed penalty notice, the principle was about carousing when the rest of the country was suffering. She has now appointed her first chief whip. Nothing new here. Well, you know, um, and uh, she, uh, the, 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 the person she has appointed, she's actually been in the whip's office for years, going back to... 2017, when she was appointed with Chris Heaton Harris under Theresa May. So it's time she was recognised for her efforts. She was long overdue a promotion. But it's more than just optics and easy headlines. Badenoch's comments, particularly yesterday uh, on the show on Sunday morning, reflect an unsteady balance between dismissing opponents' achievements and navigating her own identity within a diverse Britain. Perhaps she sees Rachel Reeves' pride in her appointment uh, as over-gender-focused, the first woman chancellor. Uh, but to ignore the symbolic power of breaking barriers rings hollow in a society deeply affected by, the, by, by a loss of faith in leadership. The mockery of a low glass ceiling remains painfully tone deaf to those who, during the pandemic, pandemic, encountered actual ceilings, limits, restrictions, heartbreaking farewells on what they could and couldn't do, imposed by a government that was indifferent to their suffering, that had contempt for their suffering, and that drank while they died. So as Badenoch critiques Reeves for her low ceiling, she might consider that these ceilings, however small, however symbolic, carry immense weight for a public yearning for integrity and trustworthiness in politics. It may be a game where, oh, we are all governments, all oppositions oppose the government's budget. It may be a game to her, but it's real life to the rest of us. And perhaps Badenoch might reflect on whether leadership is about breaking ceilings or about restoring the public's faith in those who sit beneath them.